Okay. All right. All right. I, th- I think we're good. I, th- I, th- I think we're. I think. I think we're fine. I think we're. I think we're fine on this. Fine. I guess I'll do it myself. Sorry, I don't have a yellow flannel, and my job does not pay me enough to go buy one for this bit. Nakey Jakey is a YouTuber with 1.8 million subscribers who I personally found through his illegally downloading music video and fell in love with his content right then and there. And then come to find out that this man makes music, which initially I didn't really like. Ooh, what bad taste 17 year old me had. And then 18 year old me comes along and play the ever living hell out of Not Dead Yet and I've never left the Jakey train since. I love Jakey's music, he's got a very unique writing style and his skill at sample flipping is amazing. So on December 21st, 2021 when he released Pine Barrens, that was cool. And then it had this. I can make you feel so damn alone. And the Oscar goes to Proceed to be incredibly fucking hyped. All right, February of 2022. What happens in February? Valentine's Day. Perfect time to drop the album. What else happens on Valentine's Day? My birthday. That's going to be sick. Let's watch The Breakfast Club leading up to midnight. Oh, shit. Album doesn't drop. Pain. And then after that update video back in April, I kind of just forgot about the album and accepted it as being something we're never going to hear like dead friends. Until one day I woke up and went to go take a shower, went on Spotify and saw that little blue dot on the bell and proceeded to freak the fuck out. It almost didn't even feel real, I'm not going to lie. So I think that's enough context on my end for how I went into this album. Let's go ahead and get right into my thoughts on it. Fair warning though. It is fucking hard to try to dissect these lyrics and figure out what each song means, but I will try my best. Starting off the album is the most anticipated track and one that I desperately wanted to hear. Even if we had never gotten the album, I would have settled for just the full version of Drive Off a Bridge. And the wait paid off, because this somehow ends up sounding even better than the teaser, with it sounding like Jakey re-recorded his vocals on the chorus as well as layered them, and you can't forget those sweet 808 pitch changes. Of course, the sample flip of one of the most annoying sounds in the world sounds fucking great on here, and there's that great use of the epilogue music from Shadow of the Colossus during the first half, because Jakey will prove his incredible skill at sampling all over this album. The second half includes a really nice mixture of ambient pads and keys and gives Jakey the perfect vibe to really show off his skill at rapping. The lyrics in the chorus were a bit basic, but enough of a fucking mood for me to love it, and was really interested in how the rest of the song would be, given Jakey's usual style of lyrics, but holy goddamn, is this such a step up, with the first verse sounding like a suicide note, and then the second verse sounds like a redemption arc. I love the writing about his meds as a girlfriend, calling out all of his clones in the most Jakey way possible, and been stewing these beats so long in a homemade pot shall I sell them on Etsy is my new favorite bar. And god, Jakey's performance on this track is nothing but spectacular with those heart-wrenching cries on the third part of the first verse, a really catchy melody in the beginning of the second verse, and his incredible flows that he brings during the second half, especially towards the later end. And he matches the beat with his lyrics halfway and at the end of the verse, which is one of my favorite moves in music. Overall, a damn good opening track, and like I said, completely worth the wait. The music video is a new favorite as well, probably my favorite music video of all time, because I've never had something make me smile so much. He then ends the song with the chorus of the next track, and oh my god, the transition between the two. Wow! It's a new record! Shut up. Jakey? Awesome, oh wow, like totally freaked me out. I feel like I could be gunned down in a second here. That shit's fucking amazing, isn't it? Like, totally freak me out sounds to me like a look inside of Jakey's mind on a day-to-day basis, with half of the first and second verse giving off a feel-good, hot shit vibe, and then the second half's going into more self-doubt. I also feel like the more brag rap sounding lyrics aren't really just him bragging, but more saying that, yes, I have money, no, it doesn't make me happy. On the third verse, we get Jakey focusing solely on his low mental health to then switch it up and tell the person that he'll be good, but still acknowledging that he's not perfect, which is very reminiscent of Pine Barrens, which I've seen a theory about how that song is directed towards himself rather than a girl, and I can see that theory working on this track as well with how often he goes back and forth with himself, as well as this line in particular as a standout. 
to me, this sounds like him beating himself up for taking a break instead of working on content or music, which I can relate. I can also interpret the chorus in two different ways. There's the way I initially took it, where he feels so good about himself that he could die happy, which is a bit of a reach, I know. Or there's the way that I just realized while writing the script, where it's his paranoia, thinking he could die at any second and being constantly freaked out by it. Probably the more likely way this is supposed to mean. The beat on this is really good and fits the vibe of the lyrics, with it being very cold, with the use of synths and pads, a sliding bass and trap percussion. It fits for the braggadocious parts, while also works as a backing track for having low mental health. 27, but I'm seeing 28 as a bar, and I love the callback to the Etsy line. Overall, while the lyrics are a bit confusing, the song is an absolute banger that always gets me feeling like a hot boy right next to Not Dead Yet. And I know that interlude is sampling not another teen movie, but god damn it, all I hear is Keemstar. I don't know why. Cause I can be the one for you every day. Every day seems like a look into Jakey's love life and what probably happens with most of his relationships, with Jakey never feeling like he's good enough and that he can't be the one for her. The first verse comes off to me like he's saying most of his relationships are long distance, which if you've experienced one, you know it's tough as hell. The second verse touches on Jakey's anxiety and saying that he likes it better off when he's alone, which makes him feel bad because he's in a relationship and you never want to leave a relationship. You always want that love and validation, especially if you don't have much for it for yourself. But that's not the foundations of a healthy one, which Jakey knows, hence why he tells her that it's better off for them not to be together. As someone who's listened to and made a lot of his own one-sided love songs, it's honestly really interesting to see Jakey take that concept and sort of flip it to where the finger's being pointed at himself. Hell, I praise the fuck out of XO, but if you think about it, that song is very pointing the finger at the other person, while this song is more Jakey being aware that he's the problem in the dying relationship and admitting it despite not wanting to. It's a really mature take, and it of course has its relatable moments as well as its Jakey moments. I also have no idea what the everyday sample is from, but like the entire album, I love Jakey's sample flip of it. And the drop on the chorus that sounds like it would soundtrack a driving away from the wedding scene is so fucking Good, and I love it even more given how depressing the lyrics are. I also like how thanks to the genius lyrics constantly changing, I've heard this line either be how could this be making love to you every day, or honey, this isn't making love to you every day, which I honestly kinda love because both versions fit really well. Overall, a solid track. Not really a favorite, but I like it. It's also got another really great transition. I think about each other like... Fuck, I don't know if I like that more than the other one. Survival Horror features a dark, nocturnal, Silent Hill type beat with boom bap percussion, further showing Jakey's incredible production skill and also just in general makes this album feel like a combination of the sounds from all his previous singles. Like this one reminds me of Medium, Drive Off a Bridge reminds me of Not Dead Yet, like Totally Freak Me Out makes me think of South Dakota but I think that's mostly because of the music video. Regardless, that nocturnal vibe works with the title and the song being about, I'm gonna guess, the existential dread of finding a purpose in life, so in Jakey's case, he turns to music and content creation and the damage YouTube will do to your mental health. Man, this album's a lot more similar to Rise of the Monarch than I thought. Throughout the song, Jakey uses a writing style of starting a verse with a specific year and then using hit songs from that year to describe how he was feeling during it. And for the most part, I like references, and I think this is an example of when it's done really well. The first verse is set in 2015, which is also the year that he started his channel and has him establishing his depression. That quickly goes into 2016, where he brings up that he's making music, which was also the same year where the rap review started, and also when he dropped his first single, Cafeteria, and what seems to be the first big video that broke into millions of views which I think that fame and natural imposter syndrome is played into the ending of the verse. Then we get to the third verse, which is in 2017, and makes the YouTube meaning very obvious. 2017 is also when it seems to be when his channel really started to pick up, with multiple videos that year being in the millions of views, which naturally attracts the comments, and then there's a few videos where the views aren't so well, which affects Jakey's mental health, and he proceeds to blame himself for it. And in the chorus, I personally feel like he's talking to his fan base, with him being very stressed out from, I don't know, maybe the analytics, possibly also late night editing, while also saying that he doesn't want his fan base to view him as lesser, or I don't know, maybe get a look at his self-doubt and low mental health. I feel like that last part is more notable in him sampling his online dating video for the outro, which came out after his horror and video games, where he ends that with being a bit more open with his mental health. That outro also plays into the last line of the third verse, which sounds like a reference to the Dead Friends album that he was working on before rom-com, 
which was also mentioned in the horror and video games video. It's like a fucking inception over here. I feel like all the other lines about real friends is just him gaining fame and the natural jealousy that's from it. Though I can't help but think of a certain thing that happened last year. Look, if you're in the fan base, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. Also, as a Vine kid, I loved the sample on the song that was easily one of my favorite Vines of all time. Overall, it's another solid track. I honestly love the production on it the most. Something about that boom bap beat just gets me grooving. Maybe this is what I get for leaving you out in the cold. Jack my body to the woods and let me go. Paint a picture of my life into the snow. Fine Barons was the lead single to the album, completely overshadowed by that teaser of Drive Off a Bridge, but was the song that slowly grew on me as time went on. I didn't hate it, but it was so vastly different from all his previous work and what I grew to like from Jakey that it took a bit of time to adjust to his new style that he was trying out. Once again, the song uses these more ambient keys and pads, these strings that sound like they'd fit for a wedding, a tiny little industrial synth hidden in the background, and some boom bap percussion. With Jakey singing instead of rapping and delivering a powerful performance, my favorite part is during these lyrics where he sings the last word at a higher pitch, and it just sounds so satisfying to me. The song spends its entire runtime just building up the emotion and the atmosphere and has such a satisfying moment during the second chorus where the beat drops out for Jakey to shout in the black on black or the white on white. And then the song drops back to just the keys with Jakey calmly singing the intro. We're basically back where we started and it's a nice and somewhat emotional journey. That's for the single version though. The album version has Jakey... I assume once again re-recording his vocals, or at the very least giving them a different mix, because they do sound noticeably different, adding some harmonies during the final chorus, and a whole new verse. And if I'm being honest, it's not bad, but it just doesn't feel necessary. And what probably turns me off from it is just me being so used to the original version. I'm used to that pre-chorus kicking in and the lyrics being repetitive, but still working for the tone of the song. And with the addition of this verse, it just feels a bit jarring and out of place. Like, yeah, the lyrics do work with the topic of the song, and carved black lines in the white like a love letter is a pretty good bar. It just doesn't feel like it needs to be there. And the new mix for the vocals honestly sound kind of worse to me. Again, that's probably just because I'm so used to the original. Regardless of the version, it's a good song that has a lot of elements I like, especially the backing vocals, because it took me many listens before I started hearing those, and I always like it when that happens. But personally, I like the single version more. That's the one I'm gonna listen to. Good song nonetheless. This is the song Reeboks or the Nikes is a song about Jakey's perfectionism, never being truly happy with anything he creates and always thinking that he could be doing better, but ultimately having to force himself to release what he's created. And like most of the album, the song's written in a way where it could sound like it was towards a relationship, or how I also took some of the lines being about YouTube, but the opening lines to the verses, the album delay, the description of the album stream, and the chorus pretty much all point to this being about his perfectionism. Oh yeah, I can't forget that this beat was teased way back in 2017, which, speaking of which, this beat is great. Sampling Corona's Rhythm of the Night, which is where the title indirectly comes from, brings in not only vocal chops, but formant-shifted vocal chops, so literally zero way I could not like it. All this over some nice trap percussion, a stereo pan snare, which sounds odd, but I kinda like it, dark pads and a twinkling clockenspiel xylophone, phone i don't know the fucking difference regardless it sounds nice overall i don't really have much to say about the song other than i like it beats a nice vibe i mean i have a soft spot for nocturnal shit lyrics are great and kind of chilling in hindsight good song what if it's a run come baby we can get away be my man running and i'll be your tummy hangs i know people die young and your friends fade away but i'm your jakey matthew christian simicon hey really bold of jakey to make nightcore like that so proud of man's I thought the high pitch was just for the intro, but then it kept going. Tommy Hanks, or I guess what it was originally called, Remember This Feeling, is a song about, I think, a dying relationship. I honestly don't know. I don't know if you can tell, but this album kind of has a theme of having songs that sound like they're about love and relationships, but can be interpreted in a different way. I do not think I can do that with this. All I hear is a dying relationship. Yeah, it just sounds like Jakey ending off a relationship and then regretting it and wanting to restart it, even though the girl's already moved on and he's aware that it wouldn't work out anyways, and comparing everything to a rom-com. This honestly could have been a title track, but I'm glad it isn't because I kind of hate title tracks. 
Like, do you know how annoying it is to have to always put in parentheses the song, not the album? Anyways, I guess I could probably talk about the Nightcore. I actually kind of like it. I'm not a Nightcore guy at all, but the high pitch actually benefits the song. Like, the beat actually sounds like the musical equivalent of the feeling of love, especially with those nice synth arpeggios that kind of symbolize that butterflies in my stomach feeling, in my opinion. The piano is also really nice, and here the seconds it would take to make you laugh and nearly pee is a line I never thought I would ever hear in my life. Overall, it's a fun, cute, kind of sad song. I like it. Not much else I have to say. As a kid, they used to call me fat. Brother, sister, cousin, cause my hair was massive. I'm just the baby of the fam, I guess the best is lasting. Bro All right, now time for the most difficult song in the album. What the hell is this about? Like, don't get me wrong, I like it. It's a good song. But how the fuck am I supposed to explain what it's about? The best I've been able to come up with is that I think it's about Jakey becoming jaded as he gets older. The lyrics kind of go all over the place. It's really hard trying to figure out what the central point is. Production-wise, I like it. I like the distortion on his voice in the beginning. The coming soon to own sample is a very Jakey move and easily the most nostalgic sample for me out of his whole discography. Speaking of samples, the congratulations you won throws me off every time because Not Dead Yet is my favorite Jakey song and one of my favorite songs of all time. Honestly, while I like the song, I don't think it's bad by any means. It's probably the weakest track on the album, which is a little unfortunate given how it's the closer, but eh, whatever. I, I really don't know what else to say. I'm making all you a promise if this shit sucks when it's dropping. I'll drive my car off a bridge and choke on my own fucking vomit. Overall, Rom-Com is a solid album from front to back, holding a lot of bangers, and I'm really proud of the hot boy himself for this. I know it's probably hard for him to have to put this out, but it's really good. And one of my favorite things about this album is the constant use of repeating samples and lines. Like, Totally Freak Me Out uses the same college chant sample from Drive Off a Bridge, as well as a callback to one of the lines on the song. Drive Off a Bridge ends with the chorus to Like Totally Freak Me Out. There are several lines about the 605 to the 212. Tommy Hanks's chorus makes a reference to the movie that was sampled in the intro for Reeboks and the Nikes, and then Fathead ends with the chorus to Drive Off a Bridge. Along with some of the really slick transitions, it gives this album an overall feel of an actual cohesive album and not just replayable standalone bangers. Which, don't get me wrong, those albums have a right to exist and are no less valid or good. Fuck's sake, my most recent album was literally that. And that's not to say that this album can only be consumed as a front-to-back listen, because that's wrong. I've had these tracks in my playlists and have had them individually pop up and shuffle, and they all bang like usual. But it's just those common samples, themes, lines, and references that pop up throughout the tracks that really show how much time, care, and effort went into this. You can tell that an album really means something to Jakey, and I think he did really well with this. I haven't figured out if I like this album more than Fear. I've had more time with the latter, but I've also said that if Rom-Com had come out, it would probably have been my number one. Not expecting it to actually have come out. Tracklist ranking goes Fathead, Pine Barrens, the album version, Every Day, Tommy Hanks, Reebok, or the Nikes, Pine Barrens, the single version. I know it's technically not on the album, but I like it far more than the original, and I'll be damned if I don't give it the respect it deserves. Then Survival Horror, Like Totally Freak Me Out, and finally, Drive Off a Bridge. The Drive Off a Bridge and Like Totally Freak Me Out are basically one six-minute song to me, so you can put them both at the number one spot. And that's about it. Rom-Com lived up to the hype, and that's probably the best thing I could say about it. If it doesn't end up being my favorite album of the year, it's definitely my second favorite. And of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.